All views and opinions expressed in this podcast may lead to learning. All information provided is for educational and developmental purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for a growth mindset. Before taking action, please consult your motivation. This is the Teacher Talking Time Podcast. A corrective feedback refers to any utterances, strategies, or responses made by a teacher in a language classroom uh, and also by any interlocutor. For instance, when the teacher provides explanation to a problem that has not yet occurred, uh, that is called preemptive focus on form. Uh, but when a problem has occurred, and that is when a learner has made an error, that is what we call uh, reactive focus on form. So uh, corrective feedback is a kind of reactive focus on forming a response to an error that the learner has made. Well, to me personally, I think corrective feedback is the main difference between taking a class or having somebody to help to help guide your learning process versus just being exposed to the language. Because we have a lot of evidence from, um, from the literature to say that, especially if you're an adult and you're just exposed to the input you know, of the language that you're trying to learn, it is not enough in terms of overcoming a non-target-like utterance or output you're likely to produce. Would it be fair to say then that crashing was wrong? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Teacher Talking Time podcast brought to you by Learn Your English. To those of you who are new listening to this podcast for the first time, the main aim of our podcast is to really deconstruct language teaching to bridge the gap between research and personal practice. Each episode is dedicated to our vision of education, continuous growth that is accessible, affordable, and appropriate to your context. Andrew, we also have a membership, don't we? We absolutely do. Our Learn Your English Teacher Development Membership, where you can join a community of curious teachers and educators who want to achieve more without having to plan and teach more. Leo, you like to say, teach more mindfully, right? That's right. And that's what we try to do with our membership. We try to provide content, mentoring, courses, and more importantly, a community, a community of practice to help teachers plan less so they can actually have time to develop more. And what we focus on, Andrew, mindful and meaningful teaching, better thinking, continuous learning, developing a healthy mind, purposeful creativity, mental tools for thought, and humanistic education. Andrew, if somebody wants to become a member, what do they have to do? Oh, so simple. Just go to courses.learnyourenglish.net and become a member right there. You'll have access to all of our materials, not only for this month, but for all the months that you missed in the past. If you want more information, check out learnyourenglish.net slash memberships. Hi everyone, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I'm from Poland. You're listening to Teacher Talking Time, the Learn Your English podcast. Cześć, nazywam się Marek Kiczkowiak i jestem z Polski. Słuchacie właśnie Teacher Talking Time, the Learn Your English podcast. We are thrilled to announce our partnership with Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada for this podcast series on corrective feedback. A big thank you to Dr. Eva Karchava and her MA class to produce this interview series, which we know will be a fantastic analysis of corrective feedback and its role in language learning and teaching. This series has eight episodes focusing on aspects of corrective feedback. Corrective feedback is a crucial area of second language acquisition and there has been a lot of research done recently to shed light on the role it plays in student learning. Seven of the interviews in this series were conducted by students in Dr. Karchava's MA class as means of assessment to do two primary things. Number one, to connect researchers to their audience, and number two, to have her students have a greater level of understanding and investment in the research they were reading. 
That's right, Leo, and we're excited to provide an outlet for this project and to give not only new voices an opportunity to be heard, but to allow for new podcasting experiences for many. If you or your institution is interested in producing a mini series, either as a means of assessment or otherwise, please reach out to us at info at learnyourenglish.com. This is the series introduction in our series featuring Dr. Eva Karchava and Dr. Hossein Nasaji. Dr. Hossein Nasaji is an award winner, a scholar, and a professor of applied linguistics in the Department of Linguistics at the University of Victoria here in Victoria, British Columbia. He has written extensively on corrective feedback and has published more than 100 articles in leading journals. His forthcoming handbook on corrective feedback, the Cambridge Handbook of Corrective Feedback in Second Language Learning and Teaching, co-authored by Eva Karchava, is a comprehensive volume that discusses current issues and perspectives on corrective feedback, as well as their applications to second language teaching and learning. Dr. Eva Karchava is an Associate Professor of Applied Linguistics and Discourse Studies in the School of Linguistics and Language Studies at Carleton University in Canada. Her main research interest is to explore the processes which are involved in the acquisition and teaching of second or additional languages in the classroom setting. Her research has focused on form-focused instruction, corrective feedback, and the role of noticing in second language learning, as well as individual differences, teacher cognition, and education. Her forthcoming book is also going to be, guess what, on corrective feedback, and that is going to be the Cambridge Handbook of Corrective Feedback in Language Learning and Teaching, also co-authored with Dr. Hossein Nasaji. With that said, let's get on with the show. Okay, and welcome to a very special episode of the Teacher Talking Time podcast. Not an episode in proper form, but a little teaser, a little trailer, a little short, brief introduction to a special series that we're happy to do with uh, Carleton University here in Canada on the topic of corrective feedback, something that's very important in our field and of course needs a lot more attention. And today, Mike and Leo and I are joined by Dr. Eva Karchava and Dr. Hussein Nasaji to introduce the series that we'll be doing with Dr. Kachava's class at Carleton. And Leo, maybe you can give us a little introduction to what maybe corrective feedback is before we get into the why of it. Well, I actually won't tell you what corrective feedback is because I think Eva and Nasaji are probably better suited to do this, (laughs) but I will talk a little bit about the aim of the series. So questions like, what is corrective feedback? How do you give corrective feedback? What is the purpose of corrective feedback? What different types of corrective feedback are there? When should we provide corrective feedback? These are just some of the questions that this series aims to elucidate. And hopefully, um, when we talk about the project, by interviewing some of the most prominent researchers and experts on the role of corrective feedback in second language teaching and learning, we really hope that this series of episodes will not only provide answers to some of the questions that a lot of teachers, practitioners have, but also further our own understanding of how this practice can enhance learning and achievement in second language acquisition. Dr. Jose Nasaji and Eva Karchava, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Perhaps we should start from the beginning. Now that we have introduced the series, I think the first question that we have is, what was the main impetus for both of you to actually conduct research on this area? Well, I, uh, to speak for myself, I'm, I'm, Hussein, uh, Hussein has way more experience than I do, but I'm a, a second language learner myself, and uh, I've, I feel that I've experienced the issue of corrective feedback, sort of having sat on two sides of, uh, of the desk, perpetual desk, um, uh, maybe not anymore. But um, the point is that I feel that I experienced it as a learner and I also had to deal with it as a teacher. And it was just something that I've, um, I became interested in when I was doing my master's and it became a topic um, of my thesis that grew into uh, more um, sort of um, 
interest that has dominated my life for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. I still find the topic uh, fascinating. Hossein, what about you? Um, um, the same as what Eva said, I was also myself, and I've been a second language learner, and I have found the corrective feedback a very important source of information for second language learners when they are learning a language. But at the same time, because I have been doing research in the past 20, 30 years or so as an applied linguist, um, uh, theoretically, uh, corrective feedback has been very interesting and uh, fascinating to me uh, because um, from two perspectives, the one is that uh, uh, Pedagogically, teachers are very interested in finding out how they can improve learners' uh, accuracy uh, when they are learning a language. And also, theoretically, from a second language acquisition perspective, second language acquisition researchers are interested in finding out uh, how languages learn and what is the best way of uh, promoting language acquisition. And for that reason, corrective feedback has received a lot of. Um, attention. And a third aspect of that is that recently ample uh, theoretical and empirical evidence suggests that uh, attention to language forms uh, is very crucial in language learning. Uh, this research suggests that, for example, classroom instruction that focuses only on meaning is not adequate and opportunities uh, have to be provided for language learners to have uh, attention to form, or we need, or teachers need to provide opportunities for uh, attention to form in language classrooms. Uh, so this has become very theoretically uh, and also empirically important and interesting for me. Um, of course, when we talk about attention to form, there are different ways of doing so in language classroom. For example, the teacher can provide explanations about a particular language form, or for example, the teacher can present a particular language form. Uh, but corrective feedback is interesting because uh, it draws the learner's attention to form when learners make an error, and that is when the learner uh, needs attention to form. So there are uh, so for that reason, there is a lot of argument in the field that this might be a very good way of helping learners to overcome their problems in a language when they are learning it. So for that reason, for these uh, theoretical, empirical, and pedagogical reasons, I've become very interested in that. It sounds like corrective feedback is something that is, we could actually say it's a frequent practice in, in our field. And as you said, it typically involves the learner um, receiving some sort of feedback on, on their performance. And again, as you said, this focus on accuracy sometimes um, at the expense of, because a lot of the times with approaches, we, we tend to focus primarily on meaning. And sometimes we focus on meaning at the expense of, of um, form. So perhaps for the people who are listening to this and who are going to be following this series, could you perhaps give us a um, a definition of what corrective feedback is? Uh, corrective feedback uh, refers to any utterances, strategies, or responses made by a teacher in a language classroom, uh, and also by any interlocutor when the interlocutor is interacting with a learner. Of course, corrective feedback can also be written when the teacher provides comments on written errors. Uh, but it can also be oral when uh, learners and a teacher and also uh, um, another interlocutor may be communicating with, with the learner. So those utterances that are provided in response to an error in order to draw the learner's attention to the error could be called corrective feedback. So it's a kind of reactive, that is what the literature is, a reactive focus on form versus what people say, preemptive focus on form. For instance, when the teacher provides explanation to something, uh, to, a, to, to a problem that has not yet occurred, uh, that is called preemptive focus on form. Uh, but when a problem has occurred, and that is when a learner has made an error, that is what we call, or uh, uh, SLA researchers call, uh, reactive focus on form. 
So uh, corrective feedback is a kind of reactive focus on forming a response to an error that a learner has made. And just to add to this, now with uh, you know us doing everything um, online via computer, there is also investigation in terms of uh, computer and technology mediated uh, corrective feedback, but also um, we're also looking at other factors that can amplify the corrective um, uh, focus of what uh, the teacher is trying to do, the corrective intent behind the, the feedback that's provided. So the role of gestures, for example, in providing oral feedback, how does that uh, affect the impact of feedback? So there's a, a number of um, um, sort of newer directions that are being considered as well in this area. With, with this plethora then of approaches um, and, and options for teachers. What do you see, Eva, um, as the um, main uh, importance of um, corrective feedback in the additional language classroom? Well, to me personally, I think corrective feedback is the main difference between taking a class or having somebody um, to, help, to help guide your learning process versus just being exposed to the language. It's, it's what uh, Hossein referred to as, you know, sort of just meaning focus, because we have a lot of evidence from, um, from the literature to say that, especially if you're an adult and you're just exposed to the input, to the, lang to the language input that, you know, of the language that you're trying to learn, it is not enough in terms of overcoming uh, some of, um, you know, a non-target like, um, utterance or output you're likely to produce. So having somebody there to just highlight that something you know, is inappropriate or it's not well-formed is um, to me the main importance and the main difference between learning um, a language in an instructional context versus in a naturalistic context. And um, to me, uh, I mean, I understand I'm biased in this perspective, but to me, this is sort of the main difference and um, why someone might want to receive the guidance that is not available in the naturalistic context. Would it be fair to say then, and maybe this, I can throw this one to Hossein, would it be fair to say then that Krashen was wrong? I, I think uh, perhaps we cannot say that Krashen was wrong in that sense of the term. But I think what we can say that uh, uh, what he says about comprehensible input, he argues that language learning happens only through comprehensible input. Um, this people have found to be inadequate and so saying that in addition to comprehensible input, there are other sources of information that can help learners. But what is interesting about corrective feedback is that when it comes to corrective feedback, it also supports what Krashen says, because comprehensible, feed, uh, comprehensible uh, input occurs as a result of corrective feedback. Because when, for instance, a teacher corrects a learner when the two are communicating, um, the teacher may simply ask for repetition or for clarification request, which is a kind of corrective feedback, but at the same time would help um, meaning to be comprehensible or input to be comprehensible. So what I would say, uh, yeah, so corrective feedback provides a context for comprehensible input, but if we want to say that it is only comprehensible input that helps language acquisition, uh, we would say that that's inadequate. <laughs> I like that. That's that's a really good answer. Um, even in defining what corrective feedback is, or perhaps isn't, and of course why it matters, the, the topic of corrective feedback is a vast ocean. There's lots of different, like most disciplines and most topics, a lot of different areas to be explored, which is awesome. And in our series, we're doing a seven-part series on corrective feedback. And even in the seven-part series, we can't explore all the topics. And Ava, I know you don't want to necessarily disclose the big secret and mystery of all the amazing scholars that we're going to talk to in this series now, although, Hossein, we're happy to have you here today and again for one of the featured episodes. But perhaps, Ava, you can kind of guide us and the listeners through a little teaser on what specific areas we can expect to explore um, based on those, those seven episodes. 
Yeah, we're very lucky uh, to have been able to invite several, seven scholars that work in the area of corrective feedback. And what's great is that they hail from various parts of the world, including Australia, Poland, Spain, United States, and uh, Canada. And um, their research areas actually spans uh, fundamental feedback areas of oral, written, and computer-mediated feedback as well as explores more um, the recent advancements in the area, including such topics as peer feedback, the role of individual differences, and the impact of um, instructional context. But um, not, to, not to sort of say that some of them do one thing but not others. I think if you um, listen to the different episodes, you will see how comprehensive for many of them the focus has been, and it's probably uh, good, um, you know, to for you to try and tune in to listen to the various uh, episodes to see uh, perhaps how the research that um, each scholar does is different and yet similar, and most importantly, the contributions that it's making to our understanding of the role and impact of corrective feedback on second language teaching and learning. Awesome. Thank you. And before we get to, of course, your resources and, and, and your volume and the book that both of you have published, perhaps, Ava, you can just mention, this is a special series that we're doing, and it's a special project. And we're very thrilled that you approached us and invited us to be a part of it. But perhaps you can just speak briefly on the impetus of why you decided to include podcasting or a podcasting assignment. I guess we haven't really said that uh, your students in your class will be performing the interviews with the scholars, and it won't be us. We'll be here, but it won't be us um, doing the interviews. And perhaps just a, a brief note on the impetus for that, why you decided to to do that for the first time, and what you think um, the academic benefits are of doing such a project. Yeah, so if I can take you sort of like on a story as to how this came to be. Um, essentially, the idea for this project uh, came from a study that Hossein and I have recently completed that investigated the link between uh, second language research and its use by various groups, um, including in-service teachers. And we found that uh, while some teachers do consume research findings and they try to implement them in their teaching, there's um, a majority that have actually um, have a, a hard time accessing resources, both in the physical sense, as in they don't subscribe to journals that publish the research and require membership. But what's more, even when they do get their hands on such research, there's often a gap uh, in the understanding of terminology and, and genre in which information is presented. And this makes it difficult for teachers to engage with the findings. But what was interesting in this um, study is that many of the teachers said that if there was a freely available resource that could summarize research findings on the topics that, are, that they're interested in, then they would actually make it a point to consult this research on a regular basis. So um, since, as we just explained, corrective feedback is an important um, area of research that is both of interest to classroom teachers and to second language acquisition researchers, we thought that it might be a good idea to highlight the topic in a series of episodes. Now, as you already mentioned, but I also want to reiterate the, the reason why we think that there should be more than one episode, it's because the topic is very multidimensional, it's very complex, and I think it would be interesting for your listeners and um, just a regular second language uh, teachers to try and look at the topic from different perspectives in the sense that we don't want to necessarily prescribe things, but I think it is important to see the, the fact that it is multidimensional, but it is also can be looked at from a, a number of uh, perspectives. And as you said, I'm really lucky this term uh, at Carleton to be teaching an inaugural graduate course on corrective feedback. And when I was thinking of how to make the you know students as passionate about the topic as I have been, I really wanted to come up with assignments that would um, be useful to them, not only as teachers, but also something that would allow them to give back to the other, um, to the larger community of language teachers. Because I find that um, in university courses, we tend to, of course, we learn 
and we do a lot of great things, but those things sort of stay um, behind, you know, or within the realm of the course and no one other than the people who attended the course get to see it. But I think there's something powerful in um, doing things for others as in um, doing an interview, but knowing that other people will benefit from that. And I think we're living in an age where this is sort of becoming uh, much more important. And so I wanted to include uh, something that uh, would um, make students learn, but also feel good about what it is that they're doing and knowing that what they produce is uh, important to others. And so the opportunity to do um, a series of um, podcast episodes with different leading um, scholars in CF um, in corrective feedback uh, is, in, is really important. I think it's, it's an important contribution uh, for us to, to understand. But also it's important, I think, um, for teachers, sort of going back to what I said in terms of uh, teachers not necessarily consuming feedback for a number of reasons. But I think that if teachers were to learn about the different um, researchers and uh, how they became interested in the topic of corrective feedback, more specifically, what kind of research they do, and most importantly, its impact. I think once they understand why this is done, then perhaps, um, the gap that currently exists between researchers and teachers, maybe uh, it can be narrowed because um, I think if we engage in an open dialogue, then both sides can um, see each other, can hear each other, and perhaps learn uh, from each other to inform their respective roles. All the while, keeping in mind the main goal is that we want to assist second language learning learners in their learning journeys. So I thought this would be an excellent opportunity for students to learn, but also to share the fruits of their learning with others and hopefully serve the field um, of second language acquisition and second language teaching uh, more widely and hopefully uh, maybe inspire other uh, scholars to engage in a similar way. Wow, wonderful. I was going to say, this is a very no noble pursuit. Um, and we're very happy to be part of this. Um, I think we only have one last question um, that we would like to ask. Um, you have, you're putting together a corrective feedback website. And also, you and, and Dr. Hussein Asaj, you both have um, written um, a book. I actually have the name here, Corrective Feedback in Second Language Teaching and Learning, Research, Theory, Applications, and Implications. So perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about the website and um, the, the resource, the book. Yeah, so uh, Hussein and I, I've been lucky to work with Hussein. Um, He's my favorite scholar. Um, you can have it on record. Um, <laughs> anyway, but what I'm uh, this is not our first collaboration. This is actually uh, we'll pull that clip and put yeah, it everywhere. Okay. You heard it first here, folks. By that. I stand by that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so we've this is actually our second um, edited collection. Uh, the first one was sort of a smaller. Uh, it came out in 2017, and uh, it. Um, um, was sort of an introduction um, to sort of to the field to, to let people know about the different, to have a volume that's dedicated to corrective feedback. This time around, the book that um, uh, is coming out in March this year, it's a 36 chapter edited collection on everything and anything you ever wanted to, about, wanted to know about corrective feedback to date. And we actually have had 50 two contributors to the volume. And so we're really excited wow. uh, about this uh, source. And, uh, um, but again, um, we would really like people to be able to read and access the information, but sometimes it is challenging. And so as a way to maybe bring the um, the topic of corrective feedback to the larger communities of second language teachers as part of this corrective feedback course. Um, the main sort of capstone project is the development of the website that I uh, called the um, corrective feedback for teachers 
um, hopefully, I don't know if this is a catch or not, but nevertheless, uh, it is um, a website that we're populating as part of this course. And of course it will host um, um, a page on resources in terms of books and journals and different places where you can get information, correct your feedback, but also we'll have a link to this um, to, to this podcast series that you're developing and also uh, a blog. And um, the idea is uh, to, to have that as a space that is uh, open access that teachers could access, hopefully, and um, that it's really a free resource for anyone who wants to learn about various um, aspects of the t of the of the topic. And it is really, really uh, my hope that this website will become not only a place to learn about corrective feedback, but hopefully a place where teachers and researchers can connect and engage in discussion, and hopefully in um, you know, collaborative investigations of corrective feedback. So um, this is sort of a source of information, but hopefully uh, a platform where people can connect. Is the site already live, Eva? No, not yet. Um, okay. I'm hoping it will um, go live in April, May. And this is uh, because we're populating it as part of the course. So parts of it are done, but um, not enough to, to make it public yet. For sure. So when it is, of course, we'll share that link with everybody in, in our, our show notes of, of the episodes as well. Thank you. Are there any final notes, any final messages, perhaps, Hossein, you have anything else you want to say about the series? I think you're going to be one of the, um, one of the guests, one of the people who are going to be interviewed for this project. Yeah, I think uh, Eva said everything very comprehensively and nicely. So I think I uh, don't have anything to add. So I'm just uh, very excited about this too. And I'm looking forward to that. And thank you, Hossein, very much for agreeing to take part in it. In fact, Hossein was the very first person I wrote to about this. And when he was excited and thought it was a good idea, I sort of said, okay, let me try to <laughs> approach other people. So thank you, Hossein, very much for your support. Oh, you're welcome, Eva. I think that would be a fascinating uh, project. And I think the idea that uh, the gap that you talked about, language teaching and research, uh, I think it is a real gap, and not only this research that you just mentioned that we are currently doing has revealed about this gap, but the research that I conducted about uh, uh, 12, 13 years ago also showed that very big gap that exists. So hopefully this project would help narrowing, <laughs> as you mentioned, uh, that existing gap. Yeah. Yeah. And this is exactly what the podcast is aimed at. Um, we're really um, excited to be, to act as this bridge, um, connecting all this um, very thoughtful, very well done research, making sure that it becomes accessible to teachers. And we have recently celebrated our two year anniversary of the podcast. And we were very happy to hear that there are teachers in very remote locations who have absolutely no access to research, no access to, to papers and things like that, who are actually benefiting tremendously from all the work that we're doing here. And we're very happy to have you, both of you here with us and all of those um, other researchers who are gonna be contributing to this series. And thank you very much for being open um, to this because uh, when I first had this idea, I actually had to, um, uh, talk myself down first, but then I thought, ah, let me try and ask. And when you were so receptive, I was like, okay, so maybe it's meant to be. So thank you so much for being open to this, because I know on your podcast, you've uh, um, interviewed a number of prominent researchers in our field. And uh, I think it's wonderful what you're doing, because um, you're really filling that gap, or at least making um, research not as scary as it might appear, I think, at first showing that we can all benefit from it and that it's not just for selected few, but it's really done to inform classroom teaching. So I think that's very important and I really appreciate that you exist. So happy anniversary <laughs> and many, many more. Thank you. Last word to Mike here. No, I just, I really not much to add. I think, I think Eva talked, um, talked about the main point of all of this and that's, you know, encouraging our listeners to, 
to reflect on all of our episodes. And, and I'm sure that they're going to gain a lot from the unique perspective of your students and the questions they ask. And um, if anything, it, I hope it just encourages them to think a little bit about their own practice and maybe even inspire them to take a, 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 a graduate course or to pursue their own action research at, at some level. So thank you for all that you do to both of you. And uh, I know I, I speak for all of us when I say we're really excited about um, this project. Very excited and happy to get started. And hopefully this has served as a little bit of an introduction to what we will be doing. Of course, the episodes will be published on uh, Ava's website as well as in our channel. So uh, if you're listening, if you subscribe in iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, etc., any app, and on our website as well. So starting in March of 2021, you'll start to see the feed uh, light up with our corrective feedback series. And uh, Dr. Nasaji, Dr. Karchava, thank you very much. And we're very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. You've been listening to Teacher Talking Time, brought to you by Learn Your English. Ready to take control of your education? You're in the right place. Teaching, professional development, learning. Expand your world with Learn Your English.